Luke, congratulations, your smile says it all. You had to work hard for that. How would you sum up the emotions right now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a game that I felt like I just didn't have the grasp on 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 the whole, you know, I didn't feel like I had a grasp on it. I felt like it was uh, anybody's game, especially after the first 20 legs. And, I, you know, 11-9 up, I felt I was probably lucky to be 11-9 up in a way. Um, and, you know, if maybe if Dimitri was 11-9, he probably would have felt lucky as well because we just, but in my opinion, we both weren't playing great. But the last mini session, the six, the last six legs was what won the game. To be honest, I was much better than Dimitri. He wasn't good and I was, I was brilliant. So I think that was what won the game. That middle section of the game, you seem to be struggling with yourself and the mm. pace of the game. Was was that playing on your mind at no, all after what happened in my head? No, not at all. I didn't struggle with the pace, to be honest. I think, you know, I just struggled with my own game. I just didn't feel comfortable. I, you know, sometimes you walk up on that stage and you don't feel comfortable. Not every time you walk up there and it feels absolutely unbelievable and feel like you can hit 100 averages. Um, when I walked up there on uh, Saturday night, I felt unbelievable. I felt like I could have hit what I did and I did. But, you know, sometimes you walk up there and it don't feel as good as it, it should do and you know to walk away with 101 average after that it kind of says that you know maybe my, my standards are too high sometimes but uh, you know I did enough to win in the end and uh, I think that 106 out shot when Dimitri at the back track 180s was, was, a, was a massive factor in, the, in winning that game to be honest and that's what world champions do and then decisive moments they, they, they turn the game around. On stage you don't give a lot away at times, but the, the old shoulder roll mm. celebration, you, you, you certainly let every, everyone know, talk, talk us through it. Yeah, I, the, you know, it was just one of them things I felt when Dimitri at the second 180 did the shoulder roll, I thought that's such an unnatural reaction, you know, usually he'd give it a bit of come on and he sort of was giving it a bit of swag and I thought, well, if this goes, I'm giving it back to you, to be honest. You know, I'm not shy to celebrate, it's not, I'm not one of them people that, you don't really see a lot of celebrations from me, to be honest, but... You know, I'm not shy to do it, but I don't like to give too much away. But as soon as he did that, I thought, well, you're going to get it back, to be honest. And uh, I was pretty revved up after that. And maybe that could have been the mistake he made. Because if, if he didn't do that, I might have just been a, felt a little flat. And that 106 didn't go. And then you don't see the great great things that happened after. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's when people do things like that, it revs me up, to be honest. And, uh, you know, like the last five legs after that, I was fantastic. So uh, maybe that was his mistake in the, in the game. Three Tom Plus averages on that stage you said you weren't at your very best but you can still produce moments like that and three ton plus averages tournament averages around 103 you're going to take some beating yeah that's all I ask myself Phil, is, is you know just just someone to, to play incredibly well and, and if they if they beat you then so be it but you know if I keep performing at over 100 average it will take that and if someone don't come out and play well then they won't beat me and I, you know I'll lift the title but you know it's uh, it's going to be a tough run in now obviously really good friends with James but you know, it doesn't bother me now. I'm, I'm, I'm there to beat him, and he'll be there to beat me. We've practiced all week together. Uh, we practiced together on Tuesday. Practiced together today, all day. I uh, get on really well, but obviously when I play him on Saturday, I'm going to want to beat him, and he's going to want to beat me. And uh, fantastic player, very underestimated. But with the experience I, I've got, uh, you know, I, I know not to underestimate. I know that he could come out and play as well as he did again, what he did tonight, again on Saturday. So for me, I'm going to have to work incredibly hard to beat him because I don't want to give him a shot at double because he now deadly is on. Thank you, Phil. Nick, well done. Um, Thank you. Being revved up and having that sort of energy, how does that sort of change your game in a, in a situation like that? Well, it probably changed it in a positive way for myself and a negative way for Dimitri because I, I felt a little flat. Sometimes that just happens. I don't know. I can't give you an explanation as to why that happens. But in the mid part of that game, I felt really flat. And then as soon as he did the shoulder roll, it kind of revved me on a little bit. I thought, OK, then you're going to do that to me. I'm, I'm going to fire back. And uh, that 106, when it, it gave me that energy I needed, you know, I obviously I'm one of these people that takes all the energy gels and stuff to get myself, you know, in, in, in good shape and, and the energy levels high. I wouldn't have ne needed anything because that just yeah. gave me a burst of energy, to be honest. And uh, you know, it was good fun, and everyone loves to see things. A bit of needle. It wasn't. There's no animosity between me and Dimitri at all. But uh, you know, it gave me that little bit of a, a spur to you know push on and go and win the game in good fashion. I did. James has been very complimentary of yourself this week. We spoke to him a couple of times about you in, in his post-match mm. interviews. He's obviously someone that's sitting outside just about the top 16 in the world at the moment, but is. Um, what he's won in the past obviously doesn't reflect and how he's playing now doesn't reflect that position. No, and I'll be complimentary about James, you know, we're, we're good friends to be honest. He won't like me saying that because he don't like anybody calling me a friend, but we are and he will, if he was honest, he'd say that, you know, we get on really well. 
and you know I've been practicing all week. Um, this finishing is always fantastic. It always is when we play finishing games. You know, gutted that I'm obviously playing him because I'd rather be playing him in the final or something because I'd rather practice him on Sunday, a uh, Saturday. But it is what it is. You know, I'm playing against him now. The, the, I think I, you know, I think it was three, two or three times last year. We, I think three times we played each other last year. I beat him twice. He beat me once. So, uh, you know, I know how to beat him, and he knows how to beat me. So, there's, there's no outgoing favourite. We're both going to fancy our chances. I'm certainly going to fancy mine. He's going to fancy his. And, you know, he's, he's just a player not to underestimate. To be honest. And, uh, but I just know if I'm on my top game or my A game, it's going to be, it's going to be a massive struggle for him. But if I'm not. You know, he's got every chance of winning, and you'll believe, just like I can, it's a, it's a winnable game for us both. You'll have seen sort of the struggles that he's gone through mm. of late. Um, you know, earlier in your career, you, you were someone that went through your own struggles. Of, you, you know, sort of to, to yeah, I sympathise with him. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's come through a lot, to be honest. He's, he's worked incredibly hard to get himself back into this position, and I kind of feel that so many people, not you guys here, so many people underestimate him. They, they probably would never have, uh, have given him the chance of making the semi-finals this week, but I would all, all the time. I just know how good he is. I know how mentally strong he is. Um, and, you know, if I'm not the one to go and lift this title, it's him. It wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. He's, he's got that in him. He's, uh, he'll, never, he'll never be beaten. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice to see James back in the, in the top you know, in, in the Premier Leagues and in the World Series and stuff because he deserves it. I know we spoke about it previously, but he's going to have to continue working hard. He's going to have to keep, you know, work, winning things. He's going to have to win big major tournaments. And if he does, he'll be back. But he, he's definitely not finished in this sport, I think. There's, there's still a lot more to come from James. But, of course, I hope it's not on Saturday. Thank you. Luke, the last person to beat you in a ranking major was Dimitri, who you've just beaten. And then before mm. that, it was James Wade way back in October. Are you, have you acclimatised to being the main guy in that? Because it has all happened in such a short amount of time. We sometimes forget that 12 months ago you, you hadn't won a ranking major. Well, I think it's redemption week, isn't it? I think bunting <laughs> the Masters. Yeah. It's uh, Dimitri in the UK, but if I beat James, it's the European Championship. So it could be redemption week, but of course, no, I'm only joking. It's, you know, you, there's no revenge or redemption in this game. If, if you filled it that way, then you're... You'll be looking out for revenge every every week. To be honest, you get beat all the time, and you beat people. There is no revenge, of course. Um, you know, I know that Dimitri beat in the UK Open, but he deserved it. To be honest, I know he, you know, played along and, and took a lot of time, but you know, it didn't bother me. To be honest, it meant, it meant a lot more to him than it obviously did to me. You know, obviously I wanted to win, but I'd won four major titles before that. If I'd have won that and won my fifth, then I'd have been, you know, incredibly pleased. But you know, it, it was his part of coming back into the sport and. Uh, yeah, it meant a lot more to him than it obviously did to me, but he was he was much more um, calm tonight. He didn't really play any antics. He was just getting on with it. To be honest, he kind of slowed it down a little bit in the, on the, the back end of the game, but I felt like he weren't doing that on purpose. He was trying to compose himself, and uh, unfortunately, he just weren't good enough in the end. Next up is a uh, best of 33. I think we're in an age now where it's all about the power scoring almost when you look at the top guys mm. and what, what they can do. Is James going to be able to live with you over that, that format? Uh, if I play at my best, possibly not. But to show tonight that he's... I regard Ross Smith as probably one of the top four scorers in the world, in my opinion, when he's on it. So And he, he coped with Ross pretty well. So that's just that's, there's no reason he couldn't cope with me, to be honest. But it's up to me to, to be on my A game. I think he averaged 99 or 100 tonight. So, he, you know... I, See it. Someone said in an interview, so hundred, yeah. hundred, yeah. So you know he, he can do it over a long period. The only thing he's not done over the last sort of two years is done it consistently. But you know, I just know not to underestimate him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into Saturday thinking if I score my best and play my best, I know I can win. But we all know James can can really test you. So for me, just don't take him for granted. You know, just work hard, gritty performance, and uh, don't give him any shots at a double. That's that's <laughs> the game plan anyway. You touched on it earlier, you've averaged over 100 in every round so far. I think that was 101. People talk about A game, B game, C game. Where was where was that for you, that performance? Yeah, it's probably like B game. It's, I'm not going to disrespect it and say it's D, C or D game because that you know, that'd be being negated. It's it's not my A game, of course. But, you know, my A plus game is probably what I did on Saturday. Um, you know, my A game is sort of around the 104, 105 mark. But tonight, you, c you can't. I, I didn't feel like it was as good as it, it felt with the, with the average, but you know I can't complain. It's 101 average over 26 legs of darts when I didn't fill up my best. You know it, it's, it's a good standard to be honest. And uh, you know if if I do fill up my best on Saturday, then of course it probably end up being 99, and it'd be strange. You know you'll feel like you've played better and you've averaged less. But as long as I keep you know 
hitting that triple 20 harder and harder and harder. I'll be a tough player to beat, and that's all I ask for myself. Definitely, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Look, congratulations. Thank you. Going back two years, you went out in the first round. Mm. Obviously, that means you're not defending particularly much at no. this event. So, obviously, with all the success you've had in the past year or so, does the fact that you're not defending much here, does that free up another gear for you, as we've seen, to put three time plus averages in the right? No, not at all. I think it doesn't matter what happens here this week. I'll still be you know, world number one, so you know, I'm not looking into things like that, to be honest. And I won't be looking into things like that next year when I'm defending a lot of money because I'd rather be world number one and rather be defending it than not. So for me, I, I don't look into defending this, defending that. If you do, you'll probably just, you know, you just put too much pressure on your shoulders. For me, I'd rather be where I am right now than, than not. So yeah, I'm, I'm not defending much, but next year I am. So I'm trying to, if you're going to think of a, a game plan for your ranking, is try and, you know, build as much as you can this year and not put too much pressure on yourself next year. But for me, you know, I've been world number one now. If it, if it lasts for 18 months to two years or it lasts for 10 years regardless I've, I've been there and done it so uh, I'm incredibly pleased with that regardless Obviously last year mate to the semi-final has that last year it almost inspired you a bit more this year to just push one step further mate to the final It has and I remember the last time I, I walked out this room my family was all like you'll go again next year you can do it next year and you sit there thinking yeah but will I really do it next year and I'm going to have to take that disappointment but my God, between them last sort of 12 months, I've, I've won so many major titles, five now. So, yeah, it did spur me on a little bit. And obviously coming back here this year, it's more like, you know, you want to go on and achieve things that you you felt like you po possibly could have done last year. So for me, yeah, of course, I want that redemption of going on and, and making the final and, and giving myself a chance at glory. But there's so many great players in, in this sport nowadays that you just never know if it's your time or not. But I've won so much in this sport already that I'm just enjoying it and hopefully I can win a lot more. Of course, this is James' ninth semi-final at World Match Play. Your second? Yes, because he's old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I guess I don't need to ask anything. No, no. Yeah. But going into a match like that, obviously you know him well. Is that something you consider the experience factor, or is it you practice with him so much that that kind of thing just doesn't come into your head? No, I don't. I think you know. I think all the majors we played in this year and last year, every time we're on the same session, we practice together. You know, I don't know why we just do. We like each other. We get. We have a good laugh and just you know just practice finishing. That's what we do. Um, but yeah, I think nine semi-finals is a testament to how really good he is and how underrated he is. I think he doesn't get the respect he probably deserves, just because he's not a massive 180 hitter and stuff like that. But uh, you get the respect from me and a lot of the, the top pros because he deserves all the accolades he's got. And you know, he won many majors in an era where Phil stopped a lot of Phil Taylor stopped a lot of people actually winning. So uh, he's got my respect anyway. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Luke, fantastic performance tonight. Um, obviously, when it was 11-9, you said that you weren't playing that well. But including that 1-6-4 finish, you could say that you shut the door completely on Dimitri towards the end of the match. Yeah, I did. I think after 11-9, I went off to the break and I, f I felt, you know, I wasn't playing my best. But I thought just, just kick in and just, you know, cut the, cut the big legs. It can really close the game here. And um, I can't remember where it went, but I think I went 13-10 up, then 9. And I thought, right, this is your chance now to really close it out and... Uh, you know that one six four was the, the defining factor to really shut the door in his face. To be honest, and uh, you know I thought you know you got f four legs here to close the game out, and obviously really pleased to do it in that six, twenty sixth leg. Um, but he played a great part. He played a fantastic game, but unfortunately for him, in, the, in that last session after the twentieth leg, he was rubbish. He didn't play his best, and uh, you know I was just much better. And you mentioned all. Uh, sorry. Um, and obviously you've had a glittering career so far with all the major tournaments yeah. that you've won but one thing that is missing is a match play final is that an extra incentive to go and get the win on Saturday? Yeah, there's a lot of things missing there's still a Premier League title to missing there's still a match play missing there's still a European Championship missing you know, there's still many things missing from my career to be honest but uh, I'm only 29 so I've got many, many years to put that right but this is definitely something that's missing um, and if it if it happens this year absolutely over the moon I'll be so pleased You know, it's been an incredible 12 months if it's not this year, I'll walk away and, and still work hard in, in the future years to win as much as I can because, uh, you know, when I've achieved all the things I've achieved already, world champion, world number one, I'm just here to enjoy it, to be honest. I know sometimes on the stage I don't, it doesn't look like I'm enjoying it, but I am. Trust me, I'm, I'm really enjoying life. And, uh, you know, if, if it doesn't happen this year, I go into my beautiful family and I, I get to, you know, spend some time with them. But, of course, they're going to be here on Saturday now because school's finished, so my, my stepdaughter and my son can come back and... Uh, yeah, we do it as a family, and if it, if it, if I win, I'll be over the moon. If I don't, then uh, I'll be back next year to make sure that I try again harder. Luke, fantastic performance tonight. Very well done. Thank you.